I am surrounded by 250 game-used bats by Hall of Famers. It's the most incredible bat collection in the world, and you're going to see it now. Marshall, thanks so much for having us back out to your secured vault here. And this is the home of the greatest bat collection there is. It's not at the Hall of Fame. It is here in your secured vault. And I cannot wait to see these bats today. But first, I want to learn more from you about this. So welcome and give us some education on bats. My pleasure. And thanks for inviting me. The first question, why collect baseball bats? If you go to New York Metropolitan Museum, what do you see? All kinds of weapons, swords. Picture the bat as a weapon. There's something important about what kind of career you have by the ability to hit. The pleasure people get in holding Babe Ruth's bat because he held that bat. Where did these bats come from? So let's start with Louisville Slugger. Why did these bats survive? Louisville Slugger had a vault. The reason they had these bats was because the players sent them in for new bats or they made uh, several bats uh, and they might have kept them so that they would get the calibration that the player wanted. When they moved to Indiana and since that time they moved back to Louisville, they were going to throw them away, burn them and want them. So Rex Bradley, the fellow I mentioned, said, my partner and I well, why don't you give us the bats? We said, we'll take them. So they took all these bats, there must have been 7,000 of them, to Indiana to a barn and kept them there. We call them the barn bats from Indiana. As the demand for bats increased, Rex decided to sell with his partner the collection of bats. It turns out that most of the bats were blank, college, minor league, minor major leaguers, and a small amount of big time bats. But so this gives you the, the beginning of how these bats survived. It's just luck that Rex Bradley asked for them and they gave it to them. The second wonderful thing is they kept records Louisville Slugger. Because if you can't have records like when they ordered the bat, are they indexed bats? In other words, I could, as a player, order a Mickey Mantle bat with his name on it, with the specifications of a Mantle bat, but another player could have ordered it and used it. So by having the bat records and knowing more about it and being able to determine if it looks like it's game use. So it requires some experience. Early on, when I started collecting bats, myself, Dave Bushing, and Dan Knoll wrote the first baseball book. Now you can see how thin it is. In other words, this is all we knew, and it was pretty good. But later on, with my help, Vince Malta wrote the, the, the book that updates what we have learned. So these Bibles, as I call them, are helpful in being able to understand what the spat that we are going to look at one by one today is all about. If you look at the cob bat, it's a mess. This, see, this is called checking where the wood grains are split. And what this is caused by is the velocity of the ball hitting the barrel of the bat. It also has the fact that he sent the bat in in 1925. Are those uh, spike marks at the end? I call it, this is the personality of a bat. Right. So let's look at Colfax's bat. No question, a, a bat issue to Colfax, signed by Colfax. The hitting surface is pretty clear that it's not like Ty Cobb. Honestly, I, I don't know if there's three of them out there. Now, Colfax couldn't hit a soccer ball. So his bat has hardly anything on it. Here's DiMaggio's bat. See how smooth it is? It looks very smooth. See, to me, that doesn't look like that was maybe used as often because it's very smooth. He did use it, okay. but he bone rubbed it, sanded it down okay. to keep the surface smooth. 
so ah, so the difference between like Ty Cobb's bad and Joe DiMaggio's bad is that Joe DiMaggio actually rubbed the surface down to smooth it. Right. The characteristics are different because the player is different. Here's Hack Wilson's bat. His signature right here is kind of blurred. He's got all these nails in it, carpet nails. And what is the purpose of that? To hold from checking. Checking means that the wood grain is splitting. And so they didn't have FedEx and could send it in. To, you know, these guys are making, what, $3,500 a year? So they would put carpet nails in to, to stabilize the wood grain. Let's break the Rosetta Stone. So we're gonna look at the Joe DiMaggio bat. What we're gonna look at is the center brand, the lightning bolts, the power eyes, the signature, and the characteristics of the bat. Now, you see this, the knob, this is called a Hornsby knob. The, the bigger knobs, like on the Colfax, are called roof knobs. Okay. And then the Clemente doesn't have a knob. He used the flare. And what we look at the power eyes, See the, the lightning bolts? Yep. Over different years, these lightning bolts have changed based on periods of time. And the P in power ice, sometimes it looks different. Yeah. So by going to the book, I can see all the different pictures of the lightning bolts and power ice. And it, number 10 is power ice, everything fits the date period from 1937 to 1940. Okay. Bingo! That's when he played. Yeah. Okay, so that's part number one. Yeah. We know that he had a contract with Louisville Slugger, which is true, and trademark the way it's written is also in this time period of 37 to 40. I measured the bat and weighed it and, it, and it looks like from the information that we have this time period, it's either 37 or 38. Wow! That's, he's 36, he's a rookie. So this is just a brief way in which you understand about bats and why I think that the collector's knowledge is important in looking at all the attributes and making a decision for himself as to whether that's the bat he wants to buy. Marshall, I appreciate all of this. I am incredibly excited to get to see some of these bats that you own. These are amazing, and I know you've got a ton more to look at. Can we go take a look? Absolutely. Follow me. I cannot believe what I am seeing. This is unreal, this collection. Tell me, tell me about this. Tell me, let's take some of this in, Marshall. The names that I see here are unbelievable. Uh, you're only seeing one section of the collection, but I wanted to bring three really important early bats, and then we get into the bats that you see around us right now. Is sure. That's okay. Let's do it. So I want to start with the Hannes Wagner bat. Oh, we're starting with Hannes Wagner. Okay. You know, okay. Not, a, not a bad place to start, to start with Hannes Wagner. Okay. So there are Hannes Wagner bats that have been sold. The problem with Hannes Wagner bats, most of them are coaches bats. The, the date period for Hannes Wagner game use bats would end in 1916. Okay. So the other, a lot of the other bats don't have his name on it. Uh, uh, there are some, a couple good ones, but this is the Holy Grail. This Let is the Holy Grail Hannes Wagner bat. And here is why. This is the only Hannes Wagner bat that I know of that has his signature on it. He is the first player to sign a contract in 1905 with Louisville Slugger. And all the markings are consistent with the time period. They ended in 1917. The time period is overlaps when he retired. So if it's a 1918 bat, he was gone. He was a coach maybe, or he was out of baseball. He sent this bat in for a new one and stated 1916 when he was a player. And so that means he probably used this bat maybe in 1915. So it's got all the, the attributes of the, of the time periods that we talked about to prove that this is really genuine. So the next bat, Babe Ruth. Oh, it's just, just Babe Ruth. This time period is between 1925 and 1931. How do I know that? Real briefly, there's no power eyes on it. Power Eyes wasn't until 1931. And if you look at the center brand, the M is to the 
left with the I in Hilrick, the M in Made in USA. And uh, prior years, the M is in a different location in Made in USA in relationship to Hilrick and Brasley. So I can't prove that he hit a home run with the bat. I can't prove when, you know, the, the game that he used it. But what I can tell you is let's look at the attributes of this bat. First of all, if you look at it closely, it's like a piece of artwork. It's beautiful. The tree rings are first generation. It's not uh, uh, light color. It's not reddish in color. It has the, a tan in Fatima. This bat here, to me, has so much sentimentality to it because this bat stated when he's dying, mm -hmm. toward in 19, around 1938, according to the records. And you'll see that if we get a close-up, he signed the bat. May you take better advantage than I did, Lou Gehrig, meaning take better advantage of playing baseball. I mean, it's signed with a script to it that makes it really special in light of the fact that he knows that he's in trouble. This is kind of fun to wrap it up with the modern players. So you can see, uh, you know, here's Mel Ott, there's Jimmy Fox, Al Kalon, Yogi Berra, Jackie Robinson, Ted Williams, Mickey Mantle, Ernie Banks, Monty Urban, Duke Snyder, uh, Stan Musial, Willie Mays. Here's Roger Maris's bat, given, uh, sold to me by the secretary of the Baseball Writers Association, who Maris used to hit his 50th home run in 1961. And parallel to that is Mickey Mantle's game used bat, signed by him. It makes it special because if you remember, we talked about the numbers like an S, yes. Burn Stevens and S2. Well, he used mainly Mantle on M110 model number. And the model number that are, you can see are on the bottom of the knob. This is a P72. And when you look at the record book that we talked about earlier, there's only one year Mantle used a P72 bat. One year, 1961. This, the year that he and Maris were chasing Ruth's home run record. So of all the Mantle bats you can wow. talk about. You've got a 1961 The, the only one you can prove was used in 1961, and this is, this is a P72 model. You know, these Jackie Robinson bats sell for a lot of money. I bought this bat, again, you remember I started with no one cared, for $4,000. Oh my gosh, Marshall. And you this, bought this for $4,000? Right. A Jackie Robinson game used bat? What year was that? About 30 years ago you bought it? or About the time I was attended Lincoln's inauguration. <laughs> <laughs> Willie Mays, he noticed oh, man. The, the wrapping right here? Yeah. It's because he hurt his finger. I think he hurt his pinky. Okay. And what's interesting, Marshall, and I learned this from listening to you earlier today, this must have been early in his career because it doesn't have a signature. It well, only has the name Mays typed out there. Because he had a, a contract with Adirondack. Oh, so they weren't allowed to use a signature on his bats. They can only use block letters. Ah, interesting. You see, those are the nuances of collecting, learning those stories that makes that so much fun. Wow, that's crazy. So this is the actual tape yeah. that, that he... I'm sure probably put on this bat himself to help protect his finger injury. Incredible. And then to wrap it up, um, uh, you know, I have some uh, modern players, George Brett, Gary Carter, uh, Phil Necro, Carlton, uh, let's see. I see the Raleigh fingers up there is signed. A lot of these are signed actually by yeah. the players. So there are a lot of Pete Rose bats. What makes this special? This is the centennial trademark on the bat, marking the uh, uh, 100 years of the National League. You don't ever see those on game use no. Pete Rose bats. No. I've only, there may be one or two out there, yeah. but that's, that's a very special bat. Wow, this is so, so amazing you shared this with us, Marshall. That's fine. And which bat would you like to take home with you as a gift for As me? my parting gift? <laughs> yes. What's your favorite? I'll take the Jackie Robinson. I feel like he's such a transcendent player. He's He crossed the color barrier. He's such an icon, not just in baseball, but also in, in history, in American history. On behalf of Marshall Fogel, it's yours. 
Thank you very much, Marshall. But not anymore. <laughs> Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video today. If you did, please give us a like and please subscribe to our channel if you aren't already so we can bring you more videos just like this. Until then, take care.